The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the July 18th magnificent and magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. And we know that's what life is all about. So today, you and I, we're going to go look at the circumstance of these markets, what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Call on in. Now it's not too soon. 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, 727-445-1044. would love to hear from you. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is the Hotel California, sponsored by none other than Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we have the Dow traded up 16 points at 18,532. S&P is up four at 2165. NASDAQ composite up 25 points. She traded out at 5055. Russell 2000 flat for the most part up 62 pennies. DAX closed down four points. No big deal. The FTSE was up 26 points. Gold is flat, trading out at 1327. Silver is back nine pennies. Not much at this stage of the game. It's trading out at $20.07. Light sweet crude back about 67 pennies at 45.28. Leading the charge, the upside. Nintendo, another big move to the upside. It's up 35 bucks, trading out at 302. Arm Holdings on a buyout there. That's up 41%. Up $19. Google's up 16 bucks. It's headed towards its breakdown gap, I believe. Priceline is up 13 bucks. Tesla's up six. Burlington stores, B U R L. That is up huge. What a uh, amazing looking uh, stock chart out there. As a retailer, it's hard to believe that it's just uh, from the retail, but that's who they are. They're a retailer, right? Burlington stores. Maybe it got some huge internet uh, deal that we don't know about. But the monthly chart, a big, huge confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Remind me later. We'll go take a look at it. You've got the um, the Junior Nugget Miners, Direction Daily Junior Gold. They're leading to the downside off 10 bucks out here. And uh, we've got Monster Beverage down 7 bucks. Uh, Hasbro's off 6 uh, JB Hunt Transportation down 3 So we've got uh, plenty to look at in a flat market uh, where are we going to begin well i'll tell you where we're going to begin we're going to begin we had a request to go take a look at the uh, gold vectors miners the junior miners uh etf out here that's gdxj and as we take a look we're going to see a couple different patterns out here so here, as we take a look at this, you can see really just been consolidating up at the highs since July 6. Hasn't really had much movement as an example on July 6. Price closed out at uh, 48.88. We're trading 48.09. So for two, four, six, eight, nine trading session, basically this has done very little. Hmm, maybe. But what I do see today is I see a brand new weekly profile. Let me just hit the uh, refresh button, make sure. Yeah, we most certainly do. So the top of the box is uh, 4321. And this profile here, what's really interesting is the bottom's at 3791. Where's the point of controls at 41? Well, it must be hidden right here, 4140. It's hidden right here, uh, right at the bottom of the daily chart. So just looking at this, and if you, could, you can pay attention to the uh, little data box in the lower right-hand corner of my screen out there. It gives you all of the market profiles. If you focus your eyes on where it says uh, CTRW, that's the weekly center of that box. That's at 4145. And if you look at the daily chart, 
41.40 is the magic number out there. So that on a move back, on a continued pull back out here. Don't know if we're going to get it or not. We'll go take a look at some other patterns that are out here and areas to watch. But on a move back, that would be the number that you would want to be looking for inside the GDXU. If you're long, you want to see that hold of support. If you're short, you want to see that fail as support. But that should be an ounce of waste to the downside. You're trading at 48 bucks right now. But that is the most important number to be watching to the downside out here. That is uh, GDXU. Now to the upside, what we're going to do, GDXU, GDXJ. Sorry about that. Forget about the U. Replace that U with the J. GDXJ out here. Now as we take a look at this chart, we're going to see that it certainly moved into an overbought condition. You can say, Steve-O, how the heck can you say that? Well, one of the ways that we can say that is we just look at that uh, relative strength divergence uh, indicator, which is really the one that's at the bottom of my screen. You're going to see a number of different uh, black lines on there, but that's just because I've got a tool that automatically notifies me when things are when we when we see price moving higher with less relative strength, as well as price moving lower with less relative weakness out here. Now we don't have that pattern that's in play right now, but nonetheless, relative strength indicator was able to get above 70. It it's not exactly 70. It can be 65. You start to get into an overbought condition. Now, the most bullish thing for GDXJ is that it's just been working off this sideways consolidation move, right? This uh, sideway, an overbought situation is what I really should say, with a sideways consolidation move. That's pretty bullish out here. However, however, what you and I can see is that from the low out here on June the 1st, if we count our waves to the upside, you can say, take me out to the ballpark. Because here on the trading session, just on July 14th, this made it to that seventh inning stretch. That was the high out there. That says that the high of that session on the bullish side is what you want to be paying attention to. That ought to be resistance. The price point, I'd give it to you if this uh, charting package would let me pull it up, $50.29. But the first level that you're looking at, that this needs to clear in order to continue its move to the upside, is going to be $49.16. $49.16 should be resistance out there. So hopefully that helps you out. Inside our Tiger's Den, that was for Jay. Welcome back, Jay. Hey, folks, if you haven't tried the Tiger's Den, then you got to ask yourself why. Come on over. You get a 30-day free trial of the Tiger's Den and you're going to be uh, in with a, a great group of uh, individuals out there with all kinds of information pertinent to your trading day. Okay, so now what do we want to go look at out here? Well, market's not really doing a whole heck of a lot. Let's try to figure out what, well, I tell you that the, in the, with regard to the market condition out here, let's go take a look at the NDX 100. And you might say, why? Well, the NDX 100 is moving. You've got Apple moving and grooving out here. And what we want to be paying attention to, it's the biggest mover and shaker as we speak. Now, support inside the NDX specifically. We go look at the Qs as well. 45.33.19. That's a ways to the downside. You're at 46.18 out here. Uh, what are What is the NDX 100 doing? Where is this thing headed to? Well, that is an easy answer. That is headed right here towards the island reversal. The price point on that, by the way, is going to be the low of the trading session of December 29th. That price point, where the uh, NDX 100 is headed to, is 46.44.32. There's not anything out here that suggests that it doesn't want to do that. Get back to that island. Maybe go rescue those stranded passengers. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. 
Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Back, uh, folks, uh, flat market out here. Dow has turned just slightly red. It's down one point. S&P is up a couple. We were taking a look at the NDX 100 before we went to that uh, first breakout here. Let's continue and take a look at a couple different things. Let's first look at Apple. AAPL is a ticker symbol. It's up a dollar ten, twenty-two point eight million shares. Now today, if this volume were to keep up, you're at a pace of about forty-two million shares out here. So it's a pretty big day in the case of Apple. But what it's running right into, you know, we have this gap to the downside that Apple formed back on April twenty-seventh, one hundred fourteen million shares to the downside. But the swing point that Apple is dealing with right now is May twenty-six. That was the last time that Apple was up near these prices. The high that it made then was one hundred point seven three. The low is ninety-eight sixty. You're trading inside that swing point right now. That had 56 million shares. As I say, we're on a run rate right now of about 42 million shares. So if you close inside the swing, this says to us that Apple should at least go test that high, 100.73. If we were to take out that high with volume, it would actually set up an A to B equals CD to the upside. Let's take a look at that. Your A point would be the low from May 12th. Your B point is that swing we're taking a look at April to our May 26th. And your C point, the retracement took place. So just as it found support down here at its TAS weekly profile low. And that's on uh, June 27th. So the one to one, you know, doesn't get it up too much higher, which would be 102.76. But I would say if it can actually do that, if it can actually close above 100.73, odds favor that we're at. Apple would head to, it would head to the bottom of the gap, which means the low of the trading session from April 26 out here. And that is priced out at 103.91. One step at a time, the first level is 100.73. As long as Apple closes today inside the price level of 98.64, and as I say right now, you're trading out at 99.88, it is very likely to go make a run for that 100.73. Now, what happens if it closes above that on light volume? It can still fulfill your 
A to B equals C D patterns out there. It's just uh, we like to use the word confirmation, and that's if, in fact, you can pass a swing point with volume out there. It says you can take an area of pre prior resistance and take it out with some conviction behind the move. Now, inside the QQQ series ETF, volume today about 13.6 million shares, 13.7. That says a run rate of about 25 million out here. Now, inside of the QQQ series ETF, we talked about inside the NDX 100, we talked about about that island reversal same thing inside the queues that was a trading session of december 29th and december 30th the very next day on the 31st things gapped down just as everybody was trying to maybe celebrate the uh, new year well price has now finally made its way back to that new year area 113 13 is the number where price is likely headed to now the last time that uh, the queues uh, were up in this area actually a little bit lower than where we're at but where there was a swing point it had volume there on april 19th of 42 million shares again today we're going to do only about 25 million shares so it has taken over here's an example of how you take over a swing point with light volume most certainly we've done that and that says that it can continue to move higher so the very next area to be watching inside of the queues if you see a close inside 113.13 that says a level of resistance has failed and it actually goes ahead and it completes the uh, recapture of the island reversal out there that would suggest price heading back to the 114.55 level uh, is there anything out here that shows us a sign of a possible reversal inside the queues uh, not that i see other than the mere fact that it's moving higher with light volume um, let's take a look at, um, so that's with regard to the queues. Well, let's take a look at Google. Let's go look at Google, see what it is doing out here. Trading at 751.62, up 16 bucks. Uh, it's got a nice day. Uh, volume behind its move, uh, about 1.1 million shares. The equ that equates to 1.1. That equates to about 2 million shares for the a day. This is going against both a, a swing point. And by the way, today, not too shabby. It is up against, up above. It's a weekly TAS market profile, which is 745.40. So 745.40 ought to act as a level of support on any kind of a pullback. Let's go ahead and remove those profiles, those horizontal lines on my screen. Out here. Now we've got a much clearer picture. We take a look at this line of resistance, that gap down area. And that gap down is where it's headed to. That is the high of the trading session from April 22nd when Google gapped down with volume of 7 million shares. We're not going to be anywhere near that. However, the last time that Google was up here was on May 31st. It had 2.1 million shares. So you're up here with the same kind of volume, but a much different looking candle. Because on May 31st and then on June the 1st out here, what we saw were two dojis, two dojis running into a line of resistance, two dojis in Stevie's window. You know what that means. It means you're going to buy a dog. No, what it means is that the market was tired as it was moving up into resistance. And right now, that candle session, other than light volume on a Monday in the summertime, that is not a candle of tiredness. Uh, 753.92 is where price still needs to clear. And if it can do that, in the case of uh, Google, it ought to go ahead and completely fill that gap and get up to 771.55. You know, the combination of Apple, the way it's trading, uh, Google. Let's go see what Microsoft is doing. That's in the top five as well. MSFT, well, shoot, if Microsoft is an example of what happens with regard to some of these uh, stocks here in the queues, and uh, Google's going to go fill that gap, and Apple is uh, as well because Microsoft already is. You see, Microsoft looks like it's headed to 5541. Uh, it had gapped down with volume, 126 million shares. You're doing 15 million today. 15 million is the equivalent of doing about 27.8. So you're in this gap here, a supply line. But uh, nonetheless, looks to me like uh, you've got Microsoft headed. This has an island bottom out here, too. Well, no, it doesn't really. Nah, not that we're going to go ahead and call it uh, as such. But uh, it looks like it's moving to 5541. Uh, who are the other top holdings inside the queues? Let's find out here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and see what the uh, current makeup is q q q and uh, just take a look at this if we so you got apple microsoft we looked at it amazon you got facebook facebook and basically intel okay so let's just go finish this off and take a look at uh, those two so what's facebook doing well there's nothing wrong with facebook facebook came back to a level of support which was this at wide price spread accelerated volume that was 87 million shares on the trading day of april 28th and price came back and tested that level tested it rejected it light volume you can't bust them down what is it 
that our fearless leader likes to say, you can't bust them down, it's going to go bust them up. So that's what Facebook is doing. Now, the swing out here, um, April 28th, was that the high, 120.79? I think not. It was 121.08. It was a trading day of May the 11th, although they're 119.42. The volume on that session, only 22 million shares. So far today, in summertime trading, it's done 11 million shares, which is about 20 million shares uh, if it were to continue this pace. But Facebook looks pretty good. Uh, who was the oh, Intel made up basically the uh, top five or six here because of, by uh, the way, that Google is accounted for. And Intel is up at its highs. So it uh, looks uh, fairly decent out here. Uh, it has not tested the high. looks like that's what it wants to do. Now, I haven't gone back any further than just simply looking at the most recent high. Well, it was December 29th. Also, that would make sense out here. So you had volume inside of Intel. Of course, that's holiday volume. 14 million shares. Today, you've done 9.8. 9.8 gives us the equivalent of about 18 million. So you've got 18 moving into 14. It's not all the way up there. Oh, it is. I'll be a son of a gun. I take that back. I, I, I take that back. You're trading inside that swing point inside Intel right now with what looks like volume. So what does that say? 3559. It says the NDX 100 is going to rescue those passengers. Marianne, Ginger, the professor, too. This is Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs>
Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up three. S&P is up three. Uh, the week did come to an end. Let's uh, take a look at how the week came to an end by looking at your friend and mine. That is the New York Stock Exchange. Good old New York, New York. As we take a look at it, this is the weekly chart. Uh, neither overbought, uh, clearly not oversold. So, uh, you know, no reason for it to not run higher. Now, yesterday, no, yesterday, Friday, the close of last week, over a resistance level. That resistance level being the uh, both the swing point out here from the trading week that began ended November 6. That's 2015, as well as a nice little bearish engulfing candle from June 10, 2016. What does that say? That says that that line becomes our resistance zone. It looks like this. You'll see it colored in blue momentarily. There you go. That's resistance. That price point, by the way, that you want to pay attention to, 10.64805. So what does that mean? That means an old line of resistance inside the New York Stock Exchange should now become support on any pullback. However, the New York Stock Exchange would really need to close below 10,462 in order for it to uh, have a meaning other than just a normal retracement. If, in fact, it were to go ahead and pull back out here, and I don't know that it will, but we'd have that as a very key level of now support, and that is inside the New York Stock Exchange. Now, let's go take a look at a little different picture of the NYSE. It's a beautiful picture if you're a bull. It sucks if you're a bear out here, and that's why I need to show it to you. If we go take a look at it, take a look at this. Here's the New York Stock Exchange. Now, inside the New York Stock Exchange, you know what we like to look for are divergent patterns. What the heck do we mean by that? I mean the Sam heck. Well, here's what we mean. If you take a look at these two indicators that are at the bottom of the screen, one says it's the advanced decline line. You like to see price moving higher with the advanced decline line moving lower. Give me an example. I, okay, here's an example. Let's come back to the uh, trading time period at the highs inside the New York Stock Exchange, May 21st, 2015, as an example. If we take a look at the, you're looking at just the center panel. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to smush, which is a technical term, by the way. I'm going to smush that bottom panel out here. Now we're just looking at the panel that's the largest, which is the advanced decline line inside the New York Stock Exchange. It actually, back in May of 2015, made its highest high right around the uh, trading day of April the uh, 24th. Um, and what we can see here is price was actually gradually moving higher, slightly, slight divergence, but this was making a declining tops pattern out here as price was either making an equivalent or, you know, because it really was a very close, the high on the uh, trading session of, uh, uh, May 21st was 11.254. The previous high came in at 11.248. So not much of a higher high out here, but we saw this declining tops pattern inside of the advanced decline line. Fla fast forward to where we're at today. We don't have that. The advanced decline line out here, that happens to be, by the way, that happens to be the black line that you're looking at on my screen chart. Uh, the uh, the blue, the red, and the green. Oh, mwah, those are really important. Do you see that little convergence there, that little crossover? Oh, boy, if ever there's a sign of bullishness, that was it out here. But we'll, we, we're not going to talk about that as we speak right now. Instead, what I want you to pay attention to here is that it was making higher highs. Now, I don't have the data from today, obviously, but nonetheless, this thing has been moving to new all-time highs inside. That is, folks, that is telling you, don't let anybody tell you any different. That is telling you that there are gobs. gobs can we use gobs as a technical term out here? There are gobs, or there is gobs, of market breadth out here. Liquidity. I mean, that is just simply the message out here. And, but that's not enough. Let's prove the point out here. Let's go ahead. Let's expand up the uh, bottom panel out here. And that is our volume summation index, very similar to the advanced decline line that we're looking at. And we can see that that, too, that's the black line that I want you to focus on and pay attention to. That, too, was making higher highs, was making higher highs as of basically last Thursday out here. So there's no divergence. The volume, in, even in this even in this light volume scenario that we've got going on here, and guess what your New York Stock Exchange has? It's got the volume. It's got the volume. When we take a look at patterns such as divergence, and it's not there. And you go ahead, we can fast 
forward. We can't. We got to fast reverse it, right? So we got to really put it in reverse out here. Take a look at again the high inside of the volume oscillator out here. April 17th, 2015 was when it made its high. The NYSE, by the way, at that stage had made a high. That was the all-time high that it had made at the 11.203 level, but it made a higher high back on May 21st when it got to that 11.254. But what did the volume oscillator do? It was making lower highs out here. Those are the so for those of you that are looking for like some type of major top out here, if you're expecting and anticipating that is coming from the New York Stock Exchange, you should rethink that thought because the New York Stock Exchange is strong like bull. At least it is as of July 18th at 1.30 in the afternoon. If we get new information, well, we'll share it with you. But it's not here as we speak right now. 10.655 happens to be the number of support that I would be watching on any downside move inside the New York Stock Exchange. What you and I just looked at, what we put together, you did it, what we put together was the longer term picture inside of the New York Stock Exchange. I've been trying to give you some of the intraday sessions or even, you know, that we might see some kind of a pullback. But the markets do not end. New York Stock Exchange, up at its highs, does not end with this set of patterns in place out here. So, hey, I cannot control what the market is going to do, nor can you. That's the beauty of this game. What we do is we use indicators out here. We use the best tools that we can. We've got them here at TFNN.com. The best tool, of course, is to make sure that you are using a stop on either side of the trade. In fact, on both sides of the trade, you ought to have a bracketed trade every time you trade. That way you can sleep peacefully at night. And you go ahead, you take your medicine when your stop gets taken out, and you take your presence when your exit gets hit out there. So that's New York Stock Exchange. Looks pretty good to me. Now let's go take a look at a couple of the ET, uh, ETFs for the sectors of the S&P 500. We haven't touched on the S&P 500. Um, so let's go do that. Let's just start with the, uh, well, start with the technology sector. We might as well. But of course, knowing what we were looked at inside the queues and, and uh, Microsoft and everybody else, it's no wonder that inside the technology sector, prices above the December 4th high, that's 44.65. So that's nice. Now, the volume out there was 12 million shares. He got over it with 10. We got, oh, how about that? 15 million shares on the trading day of July 14th. So that says that price is going higher inside the technology sector, higher to where? You know, really darn good question. And I'd answer it if I could. Here's the answer I would give you. It's more likely some type of Fibonacci expansion that we're looking at where price is going to. And since the XLK, I'll pull this down, we'll expand it up, is above the 1.272 expansion of its last set of swing points out here. That was priced at 45.19. The number I'd write down on my pad of paper is 46.26. Looks like that is where the technology sector is headed inside of the uh, S&P 500. And that's a, that's a lead dog out here. Yeah, certainly, if it's going to do that, might as well go ahead and drag the rest of the sectors higher, like the financials. Up 11 pennies with 21 million shares out here. Eh, kind of an inside day. So not providing us with a ton of information out here. But we'll check into that during this break and report to you as soon as we get back. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, the XLF, that's what we were taking a look at before we went to that break. I said, let's go see if we can find any morsels, any nuggets out there, dark chocolate preferably, the kind of nuggets that we like to uh, go ahead and chew on, see if we can find anything to assist you. And voila! There it is, right in front of us. Now, what is it that I'm actually looking at with all these lines? Well, I'll tell you what I'm looking at. Well, first you can see that price is trading at. This is the XLF trading at 23.61. If it can close today above uh, 23.58, eh, three pennies, but if it can do that, it'd be the first time that we've seen a close above a TAS weekly profile. And that would have to say, uh, you know, look out to the upside because you would be over a resistance area now look it's got to get well above that too but closing above that would be uh, would be intermediate term bullish out there because that should be resistance we can see over the last two trading sessions it has acted as resistance as we came into the close so what's the number you're going to be watching 23.58 but here's the other piece of information we're just simply going to get rid of price out here as we do that what you are going to notice you're going to notice that there's a brand new weekly profile let's get rid of the green one that's the weekly we already took a look at that and what i want you to focus on right now here today we see a brand new market profile that had formed and this thing formed in really bullish, bias territory. What the heck do I mean by that? That's a, Even I wonder what the heck do I mean by that. Well, that's pretty simple. If you take a look at the previous box out here, which was gargantuan. Well, I can't remember the first time I learned how to use gargantuan. Might have been, might have been a senior in, I don't know, in... Uh, uh, junior high even possibly could could it be that gargantuan could date back that far uh, it was huge out there somebody else probably going to say that today in any event out here you can see this this next box here much smaller but that's not the key the key is where did it form and where it formed was above the prior box out here and that gives us a nice little bullish bias we can see here the point of control it is closer to the bottom of the box so slightly bullish if we're even lower and closer to the bottom of the box that would give us even more conviction that price would head to 2380 but it does look like if in fact let's go ahead and put those green lines back on there that way because i don't remember the exact number that i gave you let's go ahead and turn price back on it does look like inside of the financial sector that if price can close above 2358 you're at least looking for a run to the 2380 level and of course you know what we're looking at there we're looking at the may 31st swing point high that's got 
volume of 33 million shares. You're at 21.7 as we speak today. Out of curiosity, what does 21.7 equate to on the Stevie meter out here? 21.7 says you're going to do about 35 million shares. So 35 million shares you're pushing into a swing point up at this recent highs. May 31st, it only has 33 million shares. I'd have to say that bodes pretty well for who? The Bulls or the Bears? Uh, exactly, Johnny. That bodes well for the Bulls. But it's not at the 23.67 level. It's five cents away. If it closes inside the 2367, that is the XLF, you should anticipate that price is going to go ahead and at least hit those highs of 2393 out there. And that's on our XLF. So we've got a pretty decent feel of what the market is doing right now, right? We took a look at the Apple pushing into a swing point with pretty good volume. Google doing even better uh, Microsoft inside its gap. Facebook saying it wants to test its highs. Uh, who else? Oh, Intel also suggesting it wants. That, that's like the top five, really top six holdings with inside the queues. So the queues have actually kind of woken up here. And they've been one of the weak links, so to speak, out here. Of course, you know that they aren't really weak, right? We covered that ground last week when we said, hey, if you're really going to analyze the uh, Q's out there. You better go take a look at that QQEW. And we like to take a look at what are the two doing out here. I don't have that correlation chart up. If I pull it up, there's so much data in there. It sometimes screws with the system. But in this case here, here's what we do know is that the QQEW is back inside the December 29th. It is. It doesn't have that island top that the Q's did. But the equal weight, we just took a look at the top five. The top five holdings inside the, the queues out here giving us a message that price wants to push higher now what we're looking at is we're looking at you know the other 90 plus okay that are not in the i think the top 10 11 equities inside the queues represent uh some huge portion uh all right i don't like to use inaccurate data so let's go uh, let's go find out exactly what that is out here because uh you know, i'll get some bad emails from folks uh um, what is it? Top 10, 49.65%. So the other 90%, that's what you and I were looking at by looking at the QQEW. They've been doing the heavy lifting all along this journey off of that uh, Brexit low out here with a nice pattern. So, um, And this is now above its, if we take a look at profiles, guess what? This is now above its what was a bearish oriented if it can close above the price point of 4405 it's trading at 4412 it would be another sign of bullishness inside of these markets out here that's the equal weight make sure you're paying attention especially in the queues because of that you know we can look at the spies as well and the spies etf oh shoot what is the uh, symbol for the spy one uh what is it I should have at the top of my head and I don't. Sorry about that. But uh, I, the one for the cues, I think, is is the is the better of the two, because if we take a look at what you might say, why? And then I'd have to say, well, the reason why would be let's just go look at the spies and look at the uh, top 10 holdings out there inside of the spy SPY out here. If we take a look at the top 10 holdings. They only represent 17 percent RSP. Thank you. Thank you. Top dog. It's the RSP. But, you know, when you can take a look at an indice, an index where the top 10 represent 49%. The other 90% is represented by an equal weighted ETF. That's how I really like to take a look at it. What are those guys doing? Of course, that includes the top 10. It does. No question about it. But when they're struggling, what's the rest of the market doing? You know, inside the SPY and the RSP, which I do look at, and it's often the divergences there are very helpful. But here, the top 10 holdings only represent 17%. So you're not going to see as big of a divergence with regard to a signal out there. So I hope that that helps you inside of the market. But we now know the queues are strong, light bulb. We now know that the uh, spies, the uh, top sectors, well, we didn't take a look at the XLB, but certainly the technology and the financial sector out there are strong as can be. If we just look at the XLV, see what it's doing out here, not a whole lot. It does have resistance. The resistance level uh, in this one is really going to be up at the uh, price point of 74 44. That happens to be a brand new Taz box that appeared today. So these new boxes are helpful to us because that one is biased to the bearish side. Meaning if you see a close above 74.44, eh, price is going to 
Of course, I can't control that, but the price should move higher out there. So hopefully that assists you with your trading and investing. If we take a look at Lightsweet Crude, it's trading out at 45.27. Lightsweet Crude struggling to get back into its friend, the trend out here. Uh, and that's the red line going across my screen out here. That's the red line that goes from the trading day of all the way back into the uh, January 20th time frame. That's your first touch point. Touch point number two happens to be the low of April the uh, 5th out there. And you can see that once price broke through that, it's tried. It tries and tries and tries to get into the trend. It struggles. It's not doing much to the downside, but it is not doing much to the upside either. So when we get back for this break, let's go to Steve in Nashua, who wants to take a look at a dark chocolate nugget, the N-U-G-T. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Now, let's go run out to Nashua and speak with Steve. Steve, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? How was your weekend? 
Uh oh. Hello. Oh, Steve dropped. Oh, that's a pity out there. Well, assuming that uh, Steve is still listening, in, uh, let's just go take a look at the NUGT real quickly for him. He may not have been listening when we were taking a look at the uh, gold miner, junior gold miners. We're going to see, in essence, really the same kind of a pattern out here. And that's this. Uh, that's from the trading session, the low here on May 26. If we just simply start doing our wave count, uh, we're going to say, hey, take us out to the ballpark and that's going to be on the trading day of july 7th 7 7 on july 7 7 7 7 if you believe in the one armed bandit and eh, then you'd pull this to the downside and that is the NUGT. Why do I say that? Oftentimes, when you get to that seventh wave move, it's when uh, the key of G. Uh, that is when the uh, that is when the market makes a significant top or bottom. In this case here was moving to the upside. Now, is there any real bearish signals out here? Well, you can see that the bears have tried to flex their muscles right out there. They did it on July 8th. They did it again out here on July 13th. And now what we can see is Stevie's red line. That red line is a level that says that the price oscillator has turned down. Uh, retracements and or tops will form when a price oscillator has moved, is turned to the downside. Likewise, just the opposite on the bullish side. And as long as price in the NUGT is trading below 158.76, just says you have to be careful. Uh, it does not have a price relative strength divergent pattern, but it does have, Steve-O, it does have a topping pattern out here. With regard to market profiles, there's nothing out here, at least on the daily charts, that uh, give you any reason to pause. Let's go see what the uh, weekly charts, so uh, we can throw those up on this chart right here, because uh, I can look at both of them at the same time, and really nothing that is uh, bearish on the weekly chart. So with just these other more advanced leading indicator tools out here that just say caution, support, one might say, well, where is support? It's different inside of NUGT than it was inside of GDXJ. I hope I got all those those uh, symbols correct out here. We're looking at 128.19 as the key level that you would be looking for the NUGT to hold as support. That was for Stevo in Nashville. Hey, how about that golf tournament? For those of you that do like golf, hey, there's nothing love. I mean, you live on the East Coast. Hey, if you live on the West Coast, hey, you don't even get to go to sleep at night because it's coming on at uh, 6 in the morning. I'm talking about the British Open out there, huh? What a uh, great, what a great uh, golf tournament that turned out to be. A great golf match play tournament, really. Um, you know, and uh, was just really just great, great shots uh, with guys that were to a certain extent under pressure. It, not the same type of pressure with, in my opinion, with regard to four or five, six guys breathing up your neck. When it's just match play, you know, that's what changes things a little bit. One guy hits a good shot. The next guy that's up knows he's got to hit and he's got to go flag hunting. So it really just, uh, and they didn't really cover that much in the commentators out there. I, and I don't know why they missed me, you know, because when you're, when you're, clear the field by 10 strokes out there you know there's no way that those guys in the back yeah other than if you have a uh, jean vandeveld moment it was more than a moment he had like about nine shots as i believe something like that and then these two guys you know we're not going to do that in any event out here I was just killing time as we get ready to uh, sign off here and pass this show, pass the baton to none other than our polar bear, David White. We'll see if he can get this market moving for you to the upside or to the downside. But uh, if not, you got a flat market that is uh, giving us indications that it still wants to move higher out here. And when it gets up to those other levels that we identified, then we'll see what its message is. So stay tuned for David White. And then, of course, from 3 to 5, you got the Tom O'Brien Show. Have a magnificent, a marvelous, magical Monday. And I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.